very much. It's great to be here this morning. Susie, I like that photograph you've put up there of Flavours of the Foil. I don't know if Mary Blake's here, but that was the year we ran Flavours of the Foil and something like 30,000 people turned up over two days. But we had a blocked sink. And one of the things I always remember, um, most all the glamour of, of working with food, is going out the back uh, to empty this sink regularly. But it was worth it. It was worth it because um, Northern Ireland is really undergoing a, a real food revolution. Um, when I worked in Invest NI, I knew that uh, we had some of the best ingredients in the world, uh, really due to our temperate climate. Um, it rains. Um, we are actually world class at growing grass, and I'm not saying that lightly. In the scientific world, we're, we're up there. Um, we export more beef than Scotland. We export more milk than Scotland. 20% of beef in the supermarket shelves across Great Britain comes from Northern Ireland, but it's not labelled as coming from Northern Ireland. It tends to be labelled under the supermarket's name. And one of the things I always remember in Invest in I was um, whenever we had American visitors come in, and quite frequently they would ask me, is this beef grass fed? And I used to look at them and think, well, I'm not quite sure what you feed your cows on. <laughs> your on. Yeah, sure, it is grass fed, it's grass fed. But then I realised that in America, beef isn't grass fed. Beef is generally the majority of beef in their uh, supply chain is fed in stores. And um, the foodies in America think that's a real travesty. They actually will pay a premium for grass fed beef. Um, so at that time, then, I came out of Invest in I, and one of the um, Wonderful things about working in Vest NI was you got a chance to go across uh, and see other countries. And I could really see what a wonderful food industry we had in Northern Ireland, along with some other fantastic industries. But the thing that frustrated me was that we weren't really shouting about it. Um, and so Food and I was set up by a consortium of farmers, producers, and we involved some retailers at the start. And um, we decided at that stage that we would work to put Northern Ireland food up there. And over the last five years, we've seen a really rapid growth in innovation and in the artisans. Um, you know, there's just been such a societal change in Northern Ireland. It's been a fantastic backdrop for anybody who's got any interest uh, in developing their own business. And this whole generation of very passionate chefs and artisans has emerged over the last five years. And I'm not going to pretend that the first thing that Northern Ireland is known for is its food. Um, but what I can tell you, and to back up some of the statistics that Susie has mentioned, is that whenever people get here, they're very pleasantly surprised by the quality and excellence of what we do. And of course, Charles and I have discussed this um, at all levels in food. Um, you can have good experiences and bad experiences. But overall, we can tell you that the trend for Northern Ireland is very positive and it's going in the right direction. We have observed a real groundswell of confidence amongst chefs who now actively participate in our events. I remember at Balmoral Show six years ago, you practically had to bribe them to get them to come and do a demonstration. Um, but last year we had 43 chefs who demonstrated uh, signature dishes from local signature dishes from their own restaurants. Um, there's been great rivalry has built up, in fact, in a very healthy sense between the groups of chefs up in Derry Lawton Derry and the groups of chefs in Belfast. And uh, we have started a chef group, uh, which people are very welcome to join. And we had our first uh, eat out in Belfast on a Monday, because Monday's probably the only day chefs get off. And then we took them up to Derry Lawton Derry. Uh, a month later, and uh, we're now looking for a return match now with Skillen. But just getting them together, getting them to meet producers, to talk about the new trends in food, very valuable. So if anybody's interested in joining that, or knows anybody who should be in it, uh, please come up to us. We have about 30 people on it already. The other thing about Northern Ireland, as uh, Stacey said, is we're starting to get noticed. I mean, five years ago, it was really hard to get a food writer to come to Northern Ireland, and this week we've had four of the top food writers in the UK here, all over the place. Um, we have food writers, people who have written for Financial Times, Observer, Sunday Times, Evening Standard, all over here eating and drinking. Um, and, uh, but wanting to be here, and that's a change for us. Um, Susie mentioned Donald Skeen, who was up, he's doing, he was going to do two programmes in Northern Ireland, and he's now going to do three, and he's a chef from the South. 
and he's saying that, you know, yeah, we're starting to hear that Belfast's where it's at. Just as another example, for the last two years, the Georgina Campbell Irish Chef of the Year has hailed from the North. Um, in 2013, we've the very talented Ian Orr, who's got Brown's uh, Champion Lounge and Brown's in Town, both in Derry. And in 2014, Derek Cray, who has now Harry Shack. And we have now got a clutch of Bib Gourmands from Michelin and a number of entries in the UK Good Food Guide. And as Susie said earlier, um, visitors <coughs> want authentic. <laughs> They want quality local food experiences. And I've talked about the chefs, but it's now really important to talk about the producers. I think once you get a chance to travel, you start to realise that Northern Ireland has a regional food personality. It's all around us, but we take it for granted. Um, anybody who's got family in England or students have gone to England will know that quite frequently shoe boxes of feta bread and potato foils are posted over, uh, not to mention the potato crisps. And, um, <laughs> One of the things that we did in with the Tourist Board in uh, 2013, I think, or 2012, was the World Peace and Fire Games. And we heard that there were 7,000 athletes coming to Northern Ireland, and we decided we would do a food village. I think we involved about 40 different companies across 30 different locations. We even managed to smuggle a gas grill into Belfast City Airport, and that's the picture up here. And um, we, it's not easy to get a gas grill into an airport, by the way. Um, and we met the athletes at the airport and we just did potato bread and wheat and bread and soda farls. And they were from Russia, they were from Malaysia, they were from Hong Kong, Singapore, Colombia. And they had never experienced our breads before and they absolutely loved it. And it was a great welcome to Northern Ireland. Because the whole food scene here has changed. Um, and as a way of illustrating the change, I mean, it's very easy for me to stand up here and say our food scene has changed. But if we could look at an independent measure, which is the Great Taste Awards that are organised by the Guild of Fine Food in the UK, I think that every year they are probably the biggest and the best food awards in the whole of Britain and Ireland. And I think what makes them so completely special is that they are blind tasted. That means that the products are unknown to the judges. There are among, um, I think it's about 80 judges, Charles? Mm -hmm. Yeah, about 80 judges. And I was lucky enough to be a junior judge whenever they came to Belfast last year and learned an awful lot. Um, so you're sitting there at a table of four to six people and this product comes out. You get a little bit of description about what it is, but you don't know who's made it. Um, you don't know whether it's from Northern Ireland or Scotland or Wales. Um, but they uh, sit down and they talk about something that we never talk about in the food industry, and that is taste. Um, it's a really tough process. I worked it out that only about 20% of the entries get a gold star. Um, and then if you want to get gold stars, that's, that's a much, much less. Um, it's the biggest pat on the back your food could ever get. And I think to get any star at all, you have to have 12 food experts, not just from the UK and Ireland, but from across the world, give your food that seal of approval. And I think in the case of two and three stars, I've got written down here, Charles, more than 30 experts have their say. Yeah. yeah. And in 2012, Northern Ireland uh, broke a duck. We came first. Um, we had 45 companies, sorry, we had 45, 46 local companies awarded 206 gold stars for their entries in 2012, with six products from Northern Ireland getting a three star rating. But for the first time, uh, we had an overall supreme champion who beat off 8,800 other products to become number one in the whole of the UK, and that was McCarthy's of Moira with their silver side corned beef. But just watch how these figures change. In 2013, 65 local companies were awarded 237 gold stars. We had 13 products getting a three star rating. And again, we had another first. I think this was a, this uh, time they beat off about 9,500 entries, and it was Peter Hannon, and he came first in the whole of the UK and Ireland with his Gonchali. And in 2014, it was desperate, we didn't come first. <laughs> we were got it. But you know, you can really have a good thing for so long because and we didn't do ourselves half by at all. Um, we had 101 local companies awarded 351 gold stars for their entries. We had 18 products getting a three star rating. And what was fantastic about it was that Invest and I actually had the awards held in Northern Ireland. And that made it a lot easier for food producers because if you're making a fresh product it, and you have to fly it over to England, it's just not so easy. 
Um, but it was also fantastic to get all the judges over to Northern Ireland. And at this stage, the Guild of the Fine Food had started to point out to us, um, and this is a quote directly from them. Um, I don't, this is from John Farrand, he says, I don't particularly like comparisons, but to massage your collective ego, that's the same number of awards as London and the South East. And if you want to find out a bit more about who's won the awards, we have producer guys with us today, and we've actually listed all the award winners. We've actually got two guys, but if you pick, there's some of them at the back, if you're about the award winning producers, they're all listed here, along with all the awards that they won. And not forget about what the farmers have done, because we've talked a lot about the producers and the chefs. Um, it's been great, there's been a great groundswell of uh, collective working together for Northern Ireland to get the three Product of Geographic Indication Awards for Armagh Bramley Apples, Loch Ness Eels and Cumber Early Potatoes. And that means that these quality foods are recognised as special, like Champagne and Parma Ham. And it means that um, they have to come from this region to be able to have the stable. Um, there's also been a lot of work by these producers just putting special events around these, these to celebrate them. But we need a lot more. Um, we, need, we need these awards for things like soup, celery, um, our breads, which are authentic to the region. Uh, and we need it for the Ulster Fry because... In the words of Mr. Charles Campion, it's probably the best breakfast in the world. <laughs> um, the other notable change is the number of food events that have been running. Um, in 2008, we set out to create a Northern Ireland only um, area at Balmoral Show. Very conscious that at Balmoral, we had all of the leading retailers coming in from Northern, from the UK at the time. You had Marks and Spencer's, Sainsbury's, Asda. Um, Tesco, all a significant presence at Bumworld, but there was no Northern Ireland pavilion. So we started it the first year with six local companies, it just grew by about 10 companies a year. 2013 with 60 local companies, last year with 85 local companies, and we had 43 chefs demonstrating local dishes. But what was fantastic was we saw these new products coming along. Uh, farmhouse ice cream, artisan cheeses started to appear, rapeseed oils, goat meats, ciders, real eels. I mean, genuinely, in 2008, none of those, we had none of those producers. Actually, we counted it up last year, and of the 80 producers that were there, there were 45 who had started up within the last five years. And I think one of the problems that we have in Northern Ireland is our food's all around us, but we take it for granted. I mean, we have this fantastic world being grass-fed beef, and we had a group of chefs over in Italy at Turin, and the chefs were able to say to a man, you know, our beef is better. Now, this, I'm not saying the Italians don't do some things better, but our beef is better. Um, we have our authentic breads, we've got our great teas. I mean, even in the Great Taste Award, Panjana won 21 Great Taste Awards this year. I don't know if you've seen that, it's been on the side of the buses. We've got our tray bakes. Um, soup celery, which is unique to the region. We really have a very interesting butter culture and a really burgeoning uh, microbrewer culture. Um, six years ago, we had no drinks companies to work with. We now have 12. And all these food events, and uh, there's too many of them to put up. Um, last year, Derry City Council ran um, Legendary over St Patrick's weekend. We got 36,000 people along. I've told you about how the Balmoral Food Pavilion has expanded. Uh, when we were at uh, the old Balmoral Park, uh, we got about 80,000 visitors. And now, out at, the, out at uh, Long Hesh Maze, whatever you want to call it, we get 120,000. We started Open Farm Weekend with the Ulster Farmers Union and last year we had 20 real working farms open their door and 20,000 visitors. Two years ago we started the Cumber Early Potato Festival with the farmers and we get about 4,500 to 5,000 uh, visitors now a year. But what is fantastic about it is the, far the farmers want it to be the best potato festival in the whole of Ireland and I think it's wonderful that they have that aspiration. Believers of the Foil, we started with um, Derry City Council. Um, and similar to Legendary, it attracts huge, uh, a huge footfall. Uh, we started actually with Clipper. Um, the, the first year we got a lot of encouragement. We were told that nobody would ever eat fish, that um, they would be still stand at the burger and chip pans. And uh, the embarrassing thing was that at four o'clock in the afternoon, we had 14 chefs standing with not a scrap of product left to sell. Um, and uh, I think the, uh, we were meant to go on to six o'clock, so stopping at four o'clock wasn't great. But the next year we knew more um, what to, you know, to supply more product. Um, there are things starting to emerge, like the Moore Cycle Trail. Um, 
and then one of my favourite people of all time is celebrated at the Hans Sloan Kelly Lay Chocolate Festival and not only was he a great benefactor and did a lot of work uh, with medicine on the poor, but he discovered chocolate and you have to give him that. Um, and emerging things like Taste and Dine at Belfast Restaurant Week and I don't know if Linda's here, but there's a food and drink show and so it goes on. I think last year we counted up there were 30 different food events right across the whole of Northern Ireland and the only place that there wasn't a food event specifically was um, Fermanagh and I'm delighted to say they're going to have a food and waterway in June of this year. So just to finish, um, we all want to work collectively to establish Northern Ireland as a region with a reputation for passion, excellence, sustainability, heritage and imagination within Northern Ireland. There's loads no of scope within that for regional differences and we've developed different messages. In for, for Flavours of the Foil we talked about the fish being hooked and cooked here. Uh, when we worked at the Irish Open, our, our open, our strap was lashed by a rain, bashed by a wind, what the Japanese tourists liked. Um, at the Cumber Potato Festival we talk about the Cumber early potato, or sorry, early yields from Cumber fields. So it's not about a homogenous message, but it's about bringing all those collective messages together and all those collective positive messages and building up the uh, image of the region. I know I could stand up here and talk all day, but I'm going to finish off just to say that we've just recently had some fantastic Northern Ireland success in the Gourmand World Cookbook Awards. Uh, for the first time, Northern Ireland was listed as a region, and the, uh, one of the awards has gone to Noel McNeil for his book, Irish Pantry, and um, he's in to the world finals for best chef book. Um, also, Emmett McCourt from Derry Mountain Derry, who's in for Feast and Famine, and he's being put forward for Best Culinary Travel. Um, a lady from Fermanagh, Viola O'Donnell, who's a baker, has written a story about her family um, around, the turn of the, around the time of the Titanic, and she's interwoven the stories of um, her recipes from her old family and where they travelled and it's a series of letters, people writing to each other, and they're all from Northern Ireland. It's a lovely book, and it's on, uh, it's on Amazon if you if you want to read it. Could you say the name again, please? I can't remember the name, oh, <laughs> but I'm going to look it up. Oh, but <laughs> um, I think it's it's dreams and something. But to Viola Dono, D O N O, is her surname. Okay. Uh, the other winner was Jeannie Rankin, who worked with Cancer Focus Northern Ireland, and she's been put forward for best charity cookbook. Um, Food and I had a little bit of success as well. Um, we're delighted that we've been listed for Best Digital Website, Best Digital Food Institution, and Best Culinary Travel in the World. And I've only got two stickers, and they're on these two guys. If anybody takes them, I will rugby tackle you on the way out. <laughs> but <laughs> there they are. And um, we asked the organisers for a quote, and they were over here, and uh, I'm going to finish with this. What they basically said was, this past year we have reviewed one by one all of the food promotion institutional websites from around the world. There is no doubt that Food and I ranks among the very best with, for instance, wait for it, <coughs> Restaurant Australia or the Korean Food Foundation. And I mean, that, that's just amazing. That's the first time we've ever been compared with another uh, country. Internet is a great way to promote the world class food products of Northern Ireland, which we had the pleasure to taste. Believe us, everyone will be as thrilled and surprised by their outstanding quality as we are. Thank you.